Hi, I'm Steve and this is Dave um, and we've been working on this small film to introduce some diversity of some of the solutions to wildlife friendly, ecologically sustainable food production here in Mid Wales. There's a huge range of approaches out there. Yeah, and so what we did was we got an idea, we wanted to get an idea of the diversity of these um, approaches and so we put out an ask and we got people to send us in short clips um, highlighting what kind of principles of regenerative uh, practice they were incorporating into their food growing. And um, we ended up with a, a great range highlighting, you know, uh, sort of modern technological solutions um, all the way up to um, traditional livestock based solutions at a farm scale. Absolutely, and this is just a few small clips to get the discussion going, but what we're hoping to do with this film is take it forward and develop something much bigger, celebrating just some of the real breadth and range of stuff that's already happening, what we can build on here in Mid Wales for a much more sustainable food production system. My name is Gareth Jones, I'm a hill farmer here in Tintliv and Llamavechan. I'm a massive believer in sustainable, environmentally friendly, food production and um, one of the things that a lot of people don't talk about is the most important part of the whole system and that is this, a soil and up here we have a very thin layer of topsoil so we have to farm very differently we can't intensively graze our uplands um, we have to use a cattle and a sheep system. We have got ponies as well, but they're semi-feral up on the open mountain. And you can see I grow the majority of vegetables and fruit over there. And I've got my own polytunnel to feed my family. And without the livestock that's producing this fantastic FYM, this farmyard manure, I couldn't grow these. My family has been farming this land for 370 years and we must be doing something right because we're still producing food at the highest quality. I'm Kate of Real Roots, based near Macanthleth. Like most growers, I vastly upscale field, field production this year in light of ever-deepening concerns about the fragility of our food supply chains and also to try and meet an increase in demand for more regeneratively grown local produce, especially here within the Dubby Valley. I am also growing year-round salads and herbs here in a pre-space-age unit. It's called a VF5207. I'm very fortunate to have it on loan from Tech Tubby. They are piloting a project delivered through Mentor Mon, where myself and several other growers in North Wales are trialling the system and seeing what contribution indoor vertical farming can make towards a more diverse and sustainable food future here in Wales. It's early October on the allotment plot and I've put together a display of vegetables and also a selection of wildflowers still flowering for pollinating insects. You can let wildflowers grow around the edges of your plot and in between the vegetable plants. They'll be food for pollinating insects and will seed themselves, coming back year after year in different spots. If you avoid pesticides and weed killer, the insect life on your plot will manage itself with min minimal damage to your food. Allotments can be an important resource for communities they provide food and insect habitat and carbon capture in the soil. They protect the soil. They provide learning experiences for children, gentle exercise for everybody, and lots of opportunities for social interaction. Hi, uh, Sophia from Dovey Dairy. Um, for us, it's all about the relationship we have with the animals that we work with. Um, we started small and we're focusing on really reinstating the value in dairy, uh, connecting our customers with the animals that produce. Um, I think there's a place for small scale dairy in local food systems. The pursuit of profit can often come at the expense of the animals and the land that we depend on. So we're really focused on finding ways to be beneficial to both of those. Um, our dairy is really an ongoing experiment. <laughs> um, we're organic. 
always looking for ways to reduce off-farm inputs and ways of mimicking the natural, happy lives um, of our animals. Um, sustainable farming, uh, what it means for me, myself, I, I try to farm uh, in a sustainable way. We try to, you know, grow some homegrown proteins on the farm. We try to grow all our own forage. Naturally, we have to bring in some straw to bed the animals in the winter. We are a beef and sheep unit. So I think being sustainable, having, you know, habitats on farm is absolutely fantastic. I think uh, we, we, we've got a number of habitats on farm. We've always had and we've, we've increased the number of habitats on the farm. So try to farm with nature and not, um, you know, um, be too intensive. But, you know, and I think that's where the traditional way of farming um, comes into its own. So I've been here at Kevin Cork Farm for about five years and I have been, I guess, farming for not much longer than two years. Um, I came here from Scotland and I was pretty new to, I was new to farming. My background is in ecology and conservation and um, I sort of picked up farming because uh, gradually because I wanted to keep livestock to manage habitats and um, but having started I find it it's a fascinating journey. So here you can see our beautiful Welsh black cattle they generally graze up on the hill here and we try and do it in a slightly rotational system something I'd like to do a bit more of is a bit more of a mob grazing system to give the ground a bit more time to recover and let the soil regenerate um, so from here then you can see all the way up to the very top of the farm, Gregor Bistich, where it was in the fog earlier on. And then down below you can see all our lower fields, all the sort of hedgerows that we planted over the last few years uh, and how they've come up. The Dumavi wedi wedi cyrraedd y car nawr i weld yn hwrdd newydd ni. A dyma fe, just just the Kevin fe'n fa fo'r barf crand. Um, Mae nhw i gyd fel ddiadell yn ddiadell o ddefed penfrith brynu y Cymru. A mae'r ddiadell hyn yn ddiadell o ddefed sydd wedi cael ei ddatblygu yn yn unionswydd ar gyfer y fath ma o dir. Lle mae gennym ni geie mewn, ond ond dim ond treian o'r ffarm yw hwn, a wedi'n mynydd bras uchel tu ôl ddyfe, sy'n llawn grig, sy'n llawn eithin, sy'n llawn uh, llistion bach, a llistyfiant cras iawn. Um, a mae'r fath ma o ddefed yn ddefed sydd wedi datblygu i gynhyrchu o un dechau, a'r dir fel hyn heb angen lawr o fewn bynnau. Felly, i ni medru cynhyrchu o un Wyn sengl ar y cyfryd, dwi'n ddim yn dod o lot o efeilliad, ond i bai eich bod chi'n bwydo mwy ohoni nhw, a maen nhw'n ymateb i faint o borthiant maen nhw'n cael. A go gan nyniad, dos dim angen defnyddio lot o gwrteithiau cemegol, dos dim angen i ni sicrhau bod gennym ni fwy o geiau wedi gwella a plannu porfeydd uh, modern, porfeydd llawer mwy dwys. A maen nhw'n medru cynnal i hunen a cynnal y fath o'r eistyfiant sy'n gennym ni. Maen nhw'n pori ar forfa cras a borfa melys, felly dyn nhw ddim yn ychwanegu at y dwysedd pori, mae sydd ddim ond yn, yn pigor borfa melys ac yn gadael i'r, i'r mylunia ar porfeydd llawer crasach rhag rhag ennill y dydd ar yr ucheldir yma. Felly o gynnyd, dwi'n credu bod cadw'r diedelloedd cynhennid, diedelloedd mynydd yma yn eu cynefyn yn rhywbeth sydd mor hanfodol ar gyfer dyfodol ameth yn yr ardal, ond hefyd ar gyfer dyfodol yn byw amrywiaeth ni. One of the ways that I'm trying to get more trees onto the farm, uh, whilst uh, keeping, keeping the fields open for grazing, is to plant more hedges, like this one here. Um, so eventually the plan is to, um, is to divide this field up into lots of smaller paddocks with hedges like this. Um, the, the, the divisions will help me with rotational grazing. We've also done a huge amount of double fencing over the last few years, planted miles of uh, hedgerows. Hedgerows have a bit of a win-win really, they're brilliant habitat as well as being really good shelter for the stock from wind, rain, snow, and sun, and a hot, hot summer's day. So this is a more mature hedge we put in a few years ago. Could do with a bit of management by now. I'm experimenting with species of nut tree to find which ones will grow well in the Welsh climate. Uh, these include walnuts, which we have here. Uh, chestnuts. Monkey puzzle. Ginkgo. Japanese walnut, which grows very well here. Hickory pecan hybrid and of course, hazelnuts. 
the advantages of growing nuts is that they only need planting once they have quite a high habitat value they lock up carbon and they're a high value in terms of nutrition and uh, money uh, tree crop uh, I'm on a mission to find more nuts to grow this year so please do call me if you know of any good trees that produce good nuts thank you very much and the species are quite mixed so we have quite a bit of hawthorn and blackthorn but also crab apple uh, dog rose uh, oak birch willow wild cherry um, I know there's more uh, rowan uh, lots of native species all the native species that we think would be suitable for the for this place uh, hazel lots of hazel as well so we planted a lot of trees over the last couple of decades this is an area that was fenced off in 2012 we planted lots of soft fruit trees apples pears plums uh, cherries as well as a variety of native species of woodland just to create a little wildlife sanctuary and also um, lots of soft fruit to enjoy harvesting in the autumn i think we have to get that message out there we have to stop being a throwaway society and we have to start thinking where our food's coming from, how it's produced and making sure that everybody has that understanding and everybody has a freedom of choice to buy what they want and to have an understanding of how that is produced. And then I'm sure we can have a farming food revolution in Great Britain and see this climate problem coming to an end and people working together to find solutions.